It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. Welcome in. It's Sports by the Book here at the South Point Studio. I'm Jeff Parles. Happy to be with you as always. The Hall of Famer. Our guy. <laughs> Vinny Malio alongside Vincenzo. Why do so many people in your living room? Well, I tell you what, it's always great to spend Sunday morning with a couple of thousand of your closest friends, right? So uh, we be uh, we're consistent here. You know, folks go to go to church, and then um, then they really do their praying here at the South Point for the uh, for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> more prayers, more prayers here, right? Oh, and yes, and for a longer period of time. Oh, definitely for a longer period of yeah. time. We know, we know you might that. even see some <clears throat> some white collars uh, here. Uh, <laughs> During the course of the day. Uh, well, speaking of divine intervention, let's go back to yesterday real quick. Yeah. Uh, so early on, uh, I was back there watching with uh, with you and Chris for a little bit yesterday. Uh, pretty tough start for you guys behind the counter early in the day. Better's got the the best of mm -hmm. the 9 a.m. Pacific slate, and then uh, tide turned a little bit as the day went along. Yeah, I think uh, you know. Listen, overall. Uh, it, it, kind of a balance, right? Morning, uh, betters had uh, uh, a, a really good a good start to yesterday. Uh, the the late games went the house's way, particularly uh, Colorado State covering but not winning. You know, oftentimes people will say, you know, you need Colorado State or you need the dog. <clears throat> In full disclosure, we did we did need the dog last night, but we didn't need the dog to win outright. Why is that? Because with such money line, big money lines, it doesn't take long for the money lines. Uh, on on the on the big pluses to accumulate uh, exposure. So uh, it, it was a good result. It was a good game. It was an exciting game. Um, and so, but here here's the greatest thing about yesterday from our our side of of the counter, the action, the activity, the betting, and the amount. Uh, I was just with uh, Chris Andrews, our director here at the Saw Point. And we were talking and just very pleased with the fact that yesterday's handle for the the third week of the season of, of college football up 40 percent over a year ago so you know with now let's remember this too what's important to note about that jeff is that there are now over a little over 40 jurisdictions around the country that have legal sports wagering and las vegas uh, continues to to thrive it's good it's good for everybody we're listen it's great that there's sports betting in other places because what it does is make people more familiar, more comfortable with betting for when they do come here. And, and again, credit our locals. We do a great deal of local business here at the South Point, particularly uh, uh, where we are positioned here on Las Vegas Boulevard South. Uh, we've got Las Vegas uh, on one side of the, uh, of the freeway and then, of course, Henderson. So uh, we've, uh, we've got a, a great deal of local support as well. So we're very happy to, uh, to serve our locals as well as our visitors. Vinny, let's, uh, let's dive in, shall we? Let's do it, buddy. 15 games remain on the slate, 13 of them today, two tomorrow, which will be back tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific time, 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports by the Book. We'll have two games to preview tomorrow night, and also we'll see how if Vinny still has his jacket on, if, uh, depending on how the betters do today, right? That's oh, yeah. work. Um, listen, buddy, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm always going to be. I'm just trying to keep up with you and your... Oh, okay. and your your Armani style. My Armani style. I'm not Pat Riley. I can tell you that. Uh, let's uh, let's get started in Nashville. We're going in rotation order, Vinny. Mm -hmm. 263, 264. Chargers, Titans. A matchup here. Chargers, two and a half point favorites on the road in Nashville. Total 45 and a half. Both of these teams losers a week ago. Mm -hmm. Chargers give up over 460 yards passing to Tua Tonga Vailoa, and the Dolphins lose by a score. Titans, ugly, ugly performance by Ryan Tannehill a week ago. Only lose but cover in New Orleans uh, last week. Austin Eckler will not play today for the Chargers. A few defensive injuries mm -hmm. for the Titans as well. Yeah, I think when you look at the, these two teams, right, both uh, both teams uh, uh, rough was rough last week. I think for the uh, – if you're looking at the Chargers, right, it's, it's about their defense. They've just got to play better defense, Jeff. I mean – you know, you, you score thirty four points. You especially at home, right? You should you should win a win a game. They were in a position to win a game. Credit the Dolphins. We'll get to them in a little bit. But this is a number that's that open three. Uh, 
was was three and a half uh, at midweek, mm-hmm. and now, I, particularly with the injuries and and the uh, actives and, and, and inactives, have just recently come out uh, within the last thirty minutes. So, folks, pay attention to those. We pay attention to them as well. Um, they took the three and a half very quickly, and then uh, three as well. We're down to two and a half and forty five and a half on the total. Uh, got as high as forty six. So. Uh, I think we'll see uh, you know pretty balanced action on the total here, but uh, right now it's about the Titans and riding the ship. They could they had a chance uh, to win their game too uh, in New Orleans, as you mentioned. Totally bizarre decision uh, last week by Vrabel at the end of the game, uh, deciding to kick kick the field uh, goal extra... down four. Yeah, I uh, never got the ball back. Like I, like I said to you yet yeah, last week when that happened, like they're not getting the ball back. Yeah. And they never did. And in the end, uh, Saints win, but don't cover at home. Tennessee did get the money a week ago. Let's go to Green Bay and Atlanta next. Uh, next one on your card at 265 and 266. Falcons here, Vinny. This open pick. Some bad injury news for Green Bay officially with the inactives yeah. today. Christian Watson, we knew he wasn't going to play. He's officially out for the second straight week. Aaron Jones, who hurt himself at the near the end of the Bear game a week ago, out. he's out. And now David Bakhtiari, out. So that is three key offensive starters out for Jordan Love and Green Bay. Atlanta, all things considered, relatively healthy going into this game after a win a week ago and a cover against the Carolina Panthers in their home opener uh, right now uh, for Atlanta. Uh, Akuda, as we expected, is out uh, the corner. Uh, still not fully there. Cordero Patterson out as well, but that's, again, with the way that we saw B. John Robinson look in his NFL debut, mm-hmm. and how about Tyler Algier last week with a pair of touchdowns? Not much of, not that big of a deal for the Falcons. In this well, I think uh, this is probably, uh, as, of right, as of right now, this is shaping up to be uh, probably the biggest decision of the early games. I mean, when you, when you, mentioned, you mentioned the game open pick, uh, we were at Green Bay. Again, I'll go back to early and midweek. Uh, and again, professional bettors will certainly pay attention to what number what numbers open. And we're opening numbers now in the NFL on Sunday evening. So uh, this game got, by midweek, got, a, got up to one and a half. Packers were favored. Now, very quickly, particularly as injuries have come out, uh, the Falcons are all the way up to three. So again, this when you, when you look at that, and, and that's come in, Last night, overnight, we're open 24 hours here at the South Point, too. And this morning, uh, so this, so 85% of the money has come in in the last 12 hours. And so this, that's driven this number all the way up to three, as I mentioned. Uh, so we're probably going to see this as the uh, biggest decision of the morning, at least right now. Total on the game, 40 and a half presently, Jeff, which is, uh, you know, just it's down about a point. But again, uh, not a big decision on the total. The key is going to be uh, uh, the Packers keeping it close for the house, uh, but uh, the Falcons covering for the public. Well, imagine uh, Atlanta Atlanta three would be a bad result. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to three. You never, you know, as a, as a bookmaker, uh, you you never want a game to fall on a number, right? Because a you're paying out everything that went uh, up to it. And uh, you're refunding a, 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 probably a significant portion, particularly if it's on such a key number like three. Uh, betters, they get the push if they have the three. And uh, and again, uh, will it go to three and a half? I tend not to think so, uh, but uh, we'll we'll see. If it has to go, we'll go. Right now, you guys are the market high right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I would be stunned if we see three and a half. I don't think I don't think we will. I think uh, three is probably the uh, probably the peak. That we're going to see today mm-hmm. on Green Bay. I, you know, a lot of injuries. I know, Vinny, but Desmond Ritter was totally unimpressive a week ago. Yeah, that was just more that Carolina was. Bryce Young did not ready yet. No, Vinny. no, and we'll talk about the. You know, three rookie quarterbacks. Uh, you know, started the season. Uh, a lot, a lot's put on these first and second year quarterbacks. And hey, listen, credit them for, for, for doing what they did. We're going to talk. Well, let's segue into the next game, right? Please. You got another, uh, you got a matchup of rookie, Pair of rookies. rookie quarterbacks. And by the way, Anthony Richardson, who did not finish last week's game, look, all indicate he's going to, he's going to, to go today. He's uh, in. It, he probably had the best day of the, of the three rookies, right? When, when you think about it. Yes. And what I mean by that, uh, what I looked at 
not statistically as much as, but he read the game. I thought he read the game uh, well. So um, he, he's going up right here. Uh, you know, the Colts and the Texans here, this game open with the Texans one and a half. We're at pick right now. So I think a lot of folks were waiting to, to con- see uh, the status of Anthony Richardson. And again, as we mentioned, uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, uh, he is going to play. Multiple injuries to both of these teams, uh, again, in, in rebuild mode. But uh, right now, uh, about the Colts, I think we'll see some uh, some Texans money, particularly at pick as we get closer to kickoff. Total on this one uh, at 40, one of the lower totals. Hasn't moved a whole lot. It, it went down a little bit uh, earlier in the week, uh, but no real surprise that it's come back up to 40. Houston uh, will be without Jalen Petrie, their second-year safety. And more importantly, Laramie Tunzel is out. out. That is a big deal. Uh, the best offensive lineman and the blindside protector of C.J. Stroud will not play today. I, you know, you brought it up with Richardson. Richardson, yeah, Indianapolis didn't get there in the end. None of the three teams that mm. had rookie quarterbacks starting a week ago covered last week. Richardson played very well in that loss to mm. Jacksonville. Yeah, he made a bad interception in the fourth quarter. That's going to happen. It's going to happen with the with the young quarterbacks. I didn't even think Stroud played poorly last week. Houston just no, doesn't have the horses. I just I think that Richardson probably looked the most comfortable. I, I would agree, and and I think that comfort came out of his reading of 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 what the defense was doing. So again, one game doesn't make a season, uh, but and every game these these quarterbacks will get better. You know, I mean, again, certainly go back to the days when rookies. At second year quarter, but they were they were carrying the clipboard, right? They had a headset on, and uh, even they weren't even the second. Uh, they weren't even the two if uh, if the starter got hurt. But now they're thrust right into it, and hey, give them give them a lot of credit for uh, for for get fighting through it. But as as bookmakers and betters, we're paying very close attention to that and how they adjust to the NFL speed of play, particularly. Let's get one more, Vinny. Get one more. Let's go to Motown. Detroit, Seattle, Seahawks, of course, last week, it, it, just a disastrous second half and an outright loss wow. as a pretty sizable favorite at home to the Rams. Mm-hmm. Detroit, we haven't seen them in 10 days. Of course, they pulled the upset in Arrowhead, go to 1-0 and on the year. So, Vinny, this one opened 5.5, was bet to 6, and now has stood at 4.5 after being bet down. Starting to see some fives here. Some fives starting to come back in the market a little bit. And this total open fifty one down to forty seven hasn't moved since Tuesday. Yeah, that would uh, you know it was just just was been a steady decrease. But I think it's also a decrease based on the fact that the you know Seattle's performance last week and the injuries that they have they got uh, some pretty considerable injuries uh, uh, coming out of that Rams game. I thought, and again, we'll, when we get to the Rams, uh, I think that that might have been one of, if not the biggest surprise last week of how well the Rams played, but how Frankly, poor, I didn't, Seattle was not good, particularly in the second half. See, Seattle was terrible. I mean, in the second they're, half. They're, the, the line of scrimmage, the fact that the, the, the Rams dominated the line of scrimmage the way they did on both, on both sides, offensively and defensively, I think was the biggest surprise. But uh, I think we'll see this one uh, tick back up, Jeff. Like I said, we're starting to see some fives on this game, and uh, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be in uh, shape to, uh, to see some Lions money. And again, any, uh, the extra few days to prepare for this game, I think uh, certainly helps the Lions. It was twenty-three nothing in the second half to the Rams yep. last week, mm-hmm. and Matthew Stafford looked really good. Uh, the The Rams had two wide receivers with over a hundred yards. They couldn't get to Stafford. Uh, I mean, uh, Akua had one hundred and nineteen yards in his NFL a, debut. He had a career. Yeah, <laughs> in it, his first game, one hundred nineteen two two Atwell, who's really done nothing in his short career so far, six for one nineteen. And there are a lot of look. I, I thought Seattle, the, and you mentioned you mentioned this a, a few weeks ago. The Seahawks were bet in the market. Yeah, they were bet in the, the future postseason. Book. Yeah, they were bet in the NFC West market. Mm-hmm. They were bet in the season win totals over. Yep, they were a sexy pick to make the playoffs and go over to win total. And boy, for a team that last year shockingly made the playoffs as being one of the mm-hmm. worst projected teams going in. They look closer to what we thought they were going to be last you know, year through one week. The big question, I think, with the Seahawks was was Geno Smith. Could he 
you know, duplicate at least what he what he did last year, being as efficient as he was, because they did have a good draft, um, quite you know, quite a bit of speed on uh, both sides of the ball. But again, I think it wasn't G- Geno Smith couldn't do anything because he was under pressure the yeah. entire uh, the entire time I, I, after the first quarter, and especially as you mentioned in the second half. So I think that w- that was the big surprise game uh, last week, and uh, we'll see if they can if they can rebound here. But they came out of that game a little banged up. Seahawks this week, no cross, so their left tackle out. Mm-hmm. Jamal Adams, who we expected to make his debut <laughs> today, uh, he won't play. Uh, Detroit uh, Taylor Decker is out, but we we did already know that. I think that we was knew that happened. Yeah, already. So, uh, you know, it's those are big injuries on the on the Seattle side, especially with Cross being out and uh, Aiden Hutchinson looked great a week ago against Kansas City. There's no reason to expect. Him slowing down in the second game of the season again. Lions looking to go to two and zero on the year, and two and zero start for Detroit. With having two playoff teams on the schedule out of the gate would uh, go a long way, justifying the numbers you had on them throughout the offseason. Uh, if they go to two and zero, it's already going to be a better start than last year. Remember, they started oh, they were, uh, a rough were, last year, uh, <laughs> re- result wise, uh, and had a terrific second half. So, uh, but again, we we I don't, I don't think it's a shock that. That, that the Lions are better. Uh, now, surprising that they, they, they won outright at Kansas City? Very much so. Certainly. Uh, but again, Kansas City, uh, and we'll get to them uh, without Kelsey uh, and, uh, and Jones uh, in, in that game. But still, credit the, credit the, uh, the Lions for, uh, for their resiliency and uh, the way they just battled the entire game. Vinny will have more games to get yep. to, as we know. Alex White is going to join us a little bit later as well. When we get back, we're going to Tampa to look at lines. Favorite flip on this game with the Bears and the Bucks and more, including the hometown Raiders. They can't stop betting the Raiders behind us here at the South Point Sportsbook. It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Welcome back in. It's Sports by the Book. Here at the South Point Studio, I'm Jeff Parles, Vinny Malu alongside. Happy to be with you today, Vinny. Is there anything going on? Anything going on? A little bit of NFL football. Full house already behind us. Yeah, 12 windows, 11 kiosks, three windows in the race book, and, of course, uh, the uh, South Point mobile app. And Jimmy Vaccaro uh, on the microphone. On the microphone. You know, Jimmy Vaccaro on the microphone, and I have this taped. Just like Bob Shepard's voice, even uh, remember, even after Bob Shepard retired, he always had the introduction uh, for Derek Jeter. Of course, when he got to the uh, uh, when when he was uh, up coming up to bat, Jimmy Vaccaro, bet number, bet type, bet amount, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, become an institution. Well, Jimmy himself is. Oh, or his uh, Chrissy, <laughs> Chrissy, an American treasure. Yes. And way, he may stop in, by the way, if he, uh, you know, you never know when Jimmy may just uh, pop in with uh, breaking news in the form of uh, a big ticket. tickets, as let's, he did the other day. Let's uh, go to Tampa. Let's go to Tampa. Mm-hmm. Bucks two and a half point favorites here. Bears, dreadful a week ago yeah. in a loss to Green Bay at home at Soldier Field. Tampa, you know, it, I think the game last week was just turnovers. They cashed in on three Minnesota turnovers. They mm-hmm. win the game as an underdog. Everyone bet Tampa last week. It got home and every single number. So you guys opened, Vinny, at three when it's open on Sunday night. Down mm-hmm. to two and a half in the middle of the week. Hasn't moved. Total 40 and a half. Uh, moved about an hour ago after going up from 40. You know, this is just one of those where, to me, in the, it, Vinny, in the look-ahead lines at other books, Chicago's favorite in this game, in the look-ahead line. Well, you know, we, we mentioned in the preview in the first segment about uh, Seattle getting support in the preseason. Um, the Bears Bears got, Bears, Bears got a lot of support too in the preseason in terms of the division. With the division going through transition, particularly with Aaron Rodgers uh, leaving the Packers, um, you know, the Viking. And again, the thing about the Vikings a year ago, let's remember how successful they were in they were undefeated in one score games last year, right? That, that, so this. I think folks felt that that would come back to the uh, to the mean, if you will. So, um, yeah, there was a, there was a, there were high hopes for him. Now, again, in our world, not overreacting. We don't overreact. We adjust 
So th- this adjustment, I think, is 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 warranted. Look, B- Baker Mayfield, but al- almost himself willed that team. You got to give Baker Mayfield credit because he's got that warrior mentality. Whether you like him or not, he, you know that you're always going to get battle out of Baker Mayfield, and I think that carried them last week. And I think that's what's carrying the betting opinion here. And plus. Uh, the fact that the Bears were not particularly good last week at home. So, uh, again, uh, the three, key number, it was a take, uh, but we've got two-way action. Uh, this total down to 40 and a half, it's down three points from the uh, from the opener on Sunday night at 43 and a half. So more movement on the total than the actual side itself, Jeff. So I was not one of the people who bought into the Bears going in. I didn't buy into him. It's hard in this league, unless if you drastically improve your roster, mm-hmm. to go from three to eight, which is what it would have been if they go over the seven and a half win total. And we haven't seen it from Justin Fields. They had a mm-hmm. nice offseason, but nothing that at least moves the needle to saying, whoa, they should go from three to eight. That's why I didn't really love them. Tampa, I had I Tampa I had power rated as a bottom three team in the NFL. There was a lot of going uh, into the year. Yeah, a lot and, of descent go and, towards the Bucks. Yeah. And they went out right in week one, and it's kind of like, okay, you know what? Tampa still has guys on defense from the team that won the Super Bowl just a few years ago. Bitavea in particular, who was terrific last yeah, week. Yeah, Devin White's still there. Yeah. The guys in the secondary are still yeah. there. They it's, still a veteran, have, it's a veteran roster. Yeah. They still have defensive players. Mm-hmm. Uh the question was always going to be, is the coaching good enough? Which I'm not a fan of Todd Bowles as a head coach. He's a great coordinator, but he's a horrible head coach. And can Baker Mayfield go out there and be okay? And both Which, things came, and came, both to, things it happened, came to happen last week. week so, so yeah. all right, look, this is one of those where this is a very important game for Chicago. You got to get this because you go to Arrowhead next week, you're going to be 0 3 if you lose this game today. Well, I think, you know, it's it's hard to to say, you know, must win, right? We're in, we're in week we're two, in September. right? <laughs> I get it. Uh, again, I go back to um, you know the, the the poor start by the Lions a year ago, and then the great finish. Opposite with the Jets, when we we'll get to the Jets, how with mm-hmm. the, how the, their first half was terrific, and the second half wasn't. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't want to in our world not overplaying. You know how important. Listen, is it better to be at least one and zero, oh, a one and one, rather than zero oh and two? Oh, no, yeah. no question about it. But also more so with division games, and of course, uh, they the Bears have still not gotten a division game in yet. But no, no doubt about it, Jeff. I mean, it's it's an important game for them. They, listen, they've got to be better Have at the be very better. least. They've got to be better than they were a week ago because they were not they were not good a week ago. Let's uh, let's go to the hometown team here in Vegas. One way traffic in this game, Vincenzo. No, no real shock, is there? Uh, Bills <laughs> open ten down to seven and a half now. Yeah. Uh, this moved, uh, guys, according to my uh, screen in front of me, you guys moved this at 3 in the morning. So a uh, very nice uh, yeah. nice time for that move. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because, again, we're, we're a 24-hour book yeah. here. Not everybody is uh, 24 hours. Usually, uh, and I think some, some folks, uh, depending on the, uh, on the, on the store, uh, have the, the app open overnight. We've got both. And so this is a 24-hour. It's a three-shift town. And again, I go back to the fact that here at the stop point, we do a lot of local business. And when folks get off on swing shift uh, anywhere from 1 to 3 in the morning, what do they do? They, they, they manage to come here uh, and enjoy the amenities, and they, and they, get, uh, they get to the book. So, yeah, uh, and, and so that's a, a buildup. In, in, in the yep. middle of the night, that's typically a buildup move, if you will. So at 3 in the morning, uh, that's a, an accumulation of things. Uh, as well, so uh, but it's all about the Raiders, and again, those are Raider fans too. Our, our, our there's a lot of support for the Raiders. You know what's funny? When you watch the Raiders, right, and next week they're going to have their home opener against the, the the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're going to see a great deal of visiting fans in in Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, there'll be a coin okay? flip in the way of the fans. So so, but yet the backing, the money backing overall is. Uh, you know, uh, for for the Raiders, uh, for the most part, uh, those fans that are here, they're here on vi- uh, uh, visiting, but it's also business, right? It's a secondary market. Those are Raider fans saying, hey, listen, I'm still going to be able to enjoy the game. Still going to bet the Raiders and root for the Raiders. Uh, but uh, how they allocate uh, their tickets is certainly up to them. 
But uh, this one here did open double digits on Sunday night, uh, and it's been a steady stream of uh, of Raider money. As you mentioned, we're down to seven and a half. The total on this one uh, sitting at forty seven. And um, that really hasn't been that much movement on this total, Jeff. I mean, we opened it, uh, you know, 47 and a half, 48 on Sunday night. But uh, all about the, the Raiders here. Bills figure to be better. Uh, Raiders, uh, t- a terrific win in Denver last week. Um, they've been back east the whole time. They were training in West Virginia this week. So, uh, you know, credit them. And you're seeing more teams do that, right, when they've got uh, back-to-back road games, particularly in a uh, in the same region, and uh, so that uh, that's where the Raiders have been all week. We haven't we haven't seen the Raiders here in in a couple of weeks, so uh, we'll see them this week, though. This is kind of feel like, and I know Allen was dreadful last week, and the Bills lose as the only team last week in the NFL to blow a double-digit lead. Doesn't this kind of feel like the way that the Bills have played during this run? where they get a team that's about league average coming into their building, coming off a horrible performance, where you just see the smackdown from the Bills in this game. Do they kind of feel like that? Um, she says that with such zeal as a Jet fan, too. Can you can you hear it in, in Jeff Parle's <laughs> voice, folks? Um, I don't blame you. Um, you know, yeah, you're right. And I, and I think, I think as, uh, as we get closer to kickoff, I'd be surprised if we don't see some, some Bills money. Yeah. Yeah, especially if this game goes to seven. Uh, it, listen, credit the Raiders, no question about it. The Jets' defense was was outstanding. Uh, you know, the Bills figured the, the Bills' defense was not not bad. Bills I look for their well. defense to to pressure Jimmy Garoppolo quite a bit, maybe more so even than uh, what the Broncos did last week. So, um, I think I think there'll be some some late support. For the Bills, uh, and I know that the, the pros are waiting for seven. But to your point, uh, Bills coming home here. They're not going to take their foot off the gas pedal. That's, no, you, that's for sure. No way. No way on that. All right, let's go to one where, you, Vinny, we talked about it on Friday. Big bets on the Jags here at the shop. Yeah. We're back to three, 50 and a half the total here. KC, Vinny, you want, you want something fun? This is the only 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff the Chiefs will have all season on a Sunday. It the is only the time only there. one they will play in this window all season long on a Sunday. Well, the only other 1 p.m. kick is Christmas Day against the Raiders. Well, Talk I, about being a premium team. Well, that's listen, TV TV determines that, right? Let's yeah. face it. And uh, the Chiefs, uh, it, particularly in, in the Patrick Mahomes era, have garnered the respect of, of betters and, and, you know, and, 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 and the television where people want to see them, right? And, and, and you know what What else helps drive that? Why did I want to see him? Fantasy football. Patrick Mahomes, right? One of the top picks. And Travis Kelsey, who'll be back today, who did not play. Chris Jones also. Chris Jones did not play in, in, in week one as well. So, uh, But Jimmy Vaccaro, as you mentioned, uh, brought in some big tickets uh, on both uh, the, the, the Jags uh, side. Uh, uh, and as, uh, the Jags uh, money line as well in the game. So uh, this one here, two and a half. Uh, up to three. Got got. There was a hiccup, uh, a, a blink of an eye. Uh, we went to three and a half uh, at the start of the weekend, but now settled in at three. The total on this one fifty. One of the higher totals, uh, toggling between uh, fifty and fifty one. Jeff, but uh, this is uh, this is going to be a, a fun one here. Offensive line injuries for the for the Jags here too. Yeah. So keep an eye on that, and particularly with uh, Chris Jones making his season debut. Robinson still suspended. Yeah. Uh, the uh, PED suspension uh, at the beginning of the year. Jags last week aren't great, but they did win and they did cover in Indy yeah. last week, uh, a place where they have struggled to win over the last few years. So that is a step in the right direction. And again, it's week two. Yep. By the, go ahead. By the way, just to, you know, we give it to you in real time here uh, as the money comes in. Uh, total just ticking up to 50 and a half. Okay. So 50 and a half money, on this one. Money over money coming in on the uh, Chiefs Jags right now. Let's get one more game. The final game of the 10 a.m. Pacific card here. And this is a doozy in uh, in Baltimore or excuse me, in Cincinnati. Well, actually, hold on, Vinny. I'm going to hold on on this. Let's bring Jimmy in. Jimmy, Jimmy the is, Carol. Jimmy is in the house. What yeah, do you have for pick us? Up that, pick up Jimmy. that microphone right there. Wow. Go on Vinny's mic yeah. real quick. Come here. Where are you going? I'm, you're going to go here. He's been telling me for years. 
right, right, right. We want, we want people to hear you. <laughs> well, hey, ladies hey. and gentlemen, here it is. Ed Sullivan show, 8, 830, every Sunday night. <laughs> What's she laughing for? <laughs> I got a ticket for you, Vincenzo. A guy you, just waltzed up. He bet 22000 on the charges, minus two and a half. And as we've been saying quite a bit, plus two and a half, that all these people are coming around, and it's like a new wave of people betting a lot of money. Now, naturally, it's coming from both ends, too. It's coming from just the entertainment value, like, like last night's Colorado, Colorado State game. How can you not want to go see a game anymore? And big money bet does that, too, makes it like seem like, well, there must be something going on at the South Point. Jimmy's talking about all these things. And he's right. You know, there's always things going on here. So here it is, 22,000 win 20,000. Anything else comes up before the kickoff, I'll run over and let you guys know. Sounds great. All right, Ben Chen. There we go. There, there he is, Jimmy Vaccaro, everybody. Very good. Uh, Two and a half up to three as uh, 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 by virtue of— back, uh, back to three on the big bet? On the— uh, on the Chargers now. Right. Well, that is now uh, that you guys are the peak of the market on Tennessee. If you wanted, uh, side I like Titans getting the points. Well, if you look at how the uh, the game's been being bet, right? It's uh, uh it's toggling gone back and forth, toggling. Yes, between two and a half and three, laying two and a half, taking three with the dog. Let's get Cincinnati and Baltimore yeah. before we bring Alex White on. Uh, as we saw her yesterday, uh, got the better of me in the alma mater showdown. 61 yard kick. Uh, That's for Harrison right. Beavis. To, and like, she's get it done for beaming. Me. She's smiling <laughs> as a result of that victory. So, Vinny, you guys are the only three flat in the market on this game with Cincinnati laying it at home. Mm -hmm. 45, the total in this one. Mark Andrews is going to play for Baltimore. That was a question. He is in. Uh, Cincinnati, of course, coming off a, just a dreadful offensive performance. 83 passing yards against Cleveland a week ago. Yeah. I mean, when, when you look, it was. was, was Pretty one-sided, right? And 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 you, we mentioned earlier how typically uh, Josh Allen and the Bills re rebound off a loss. Uh, I think we've seen that from Joe Burrow as well and the Bengals. So, and here you have a game, a, a division game, and the Ravens in back-to-back. -back, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the Bengals in back-to-back -back division games. So, you know, extremely important for them. Uh, look. Dobbins out, but I think there's some depth at, at the running back position for for the Ravens uh, when you look at that roster. But this is a uh, this is stood at three. Uh, the total did get as high as 46 and a half, 47 in some spots, Jeff. But it's uh, uh, come back down, so uh, we'll have to see. But it's uh, it's an important game, certainly uh, early, particularly for the Bengals. I think in terms of just their overall psyche. Right, look, think about it. It was a, an, a really bad performance last week. Credit the Browns uh, for, for their performance in the game. But uh, that's uh, that's where we stand on this one right now uh, with a, at a field goal. Bengals last year started 0-2. They, they lost they their ridiculous game to Pittsburgh where Burrow turned it over five times, yeah. lost in overtime. Mm -hmm. And then lost to Cooper Rush and the Cowboys in yeah. week two before turning it on and then only losing – Two more games the rest of the but season. But the difference is they weren't 0 2 in the division. Well, that did. So exactly. now going 0 2, and I mean, we talked about it earlier, right? It's uh, the division uh, games uh, have a lot uh, more implications. That's the big thing. You go 0 2 in the division, and one of those losses comes at home. Tough. The uphill battle yep. for Cincinnati. Cincinnati, by the way, in the Monday night doubleheader next week, they'll host the Rams uh, along with Philly and Tampa next Monday night. Uh, next. <laughs> Love those double headers. Yeah, the double oh, headers. Okay. We have we have multiple double headers back to back weeks on Monday night. We will move to the late slate. The Giants and the Cardinals. Oh boy, the Giants coming off an embarrassment at the Meadowlands a week ago. Uh, how did Zach Wilson move the line against the Jets and more? <laughs> when we get back, sports by the book here at the South Point Studio. Welcome back in. It's Sports by the Book here at the South Point Studio. Happy to be with you. As always, NFL Week 2. We're excited. I'm Jeff Parles. Vinny Maliolo is alongside Alex White back on the desk as well. Alex, good to see you again. Before we get into uh, the late slate here, Vincenzo. Yeah. Jimmy just walked back in. And we had you the... say two-way action sometimes, and we have two-way action on, on big bets here. Well, we love two-way action. Uh, we we just uh, we, again, there's uh, particularly in in the NFL with the key number of three. We don't want that game to fall. So let's let's break it down. Jimmy came in a little while ago, and uh, they laid the Chargers uh, uh, for twenty-two thousand. 
right? At uh, two and a half, we went to three. Uh, went to commercial just as we uh, were coming back from commercial. Jimmy walked in. Somebody took the three. Okay. And now we're back to uh, to two and a half on the, with the Chargers. Now, the well, we, reason we don't want the three, for some folks that may uh, want to just clarify, uh, would mean we'd have to refund all the bets at three, but pay uh, the uh, uh, the favorite uh, at laying uh, lay at two and a half. So uh, numbers falling in particularly on the key number of three uh, always bode better for the uh, uh, for the other side of the counter. Happens sometimes, but probably with the number of three, oh, in recent years, uh, maybe about uh, not quite twenty percent, maybe about seventeen, eighteen percent. So, I don't think that game's landing. I don't want to. Jeez, throw, I hope that I, wasn't. I hope I that wasn't the host jinx. I don't. I don't want to throw that into existence for you, but I really do think. Not that we're superstitious. For, for what it's worth, I have Tennessee winning the game out. Yep, that, Tennessee that, winning the game out. Right, I have Tennessee winning the game. Out. Okay, so you um, took them on the money line. I t- I took uh, I took three earlier in the week. Okay. I uh I, I don't have the intestinal fortitude to take them on. One of those Sunday night professional sharp guys. <laughs> I was telling you about. Alex, uh, before we get into the late slate, uh, you and I had this discussion on Thursday with Atlanta and Green Bay. You're not bothering anymore. That thing's up to three. So you're very happy with your good numbers on Atlanta and say, all right, if if I lose with all that closing line value, so be it. I was very tempted to take the three today, but I come back the other way. Come back the other way. But I think you told me a story about that actually resulting bad for you. Which one? You uh, you tried to buy back the other way, and then oh, you should have oh, just stuck oh, oh, with that's it. That's just that's just me. Be, be, be that that was just an in-game middle more than anything. Okay. where I got greedy and tried to buy back on, and got smashed on the middle attempt, and uh, cut my profit in half. That happens from time to time, right, Vinny? Every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay if you get you know if it's in if it's in your budget to to get greedy. We're, we're not going to turn you down. <laughs> oh, that's true. I'm sure you will. That's true, uh, Alex. For the other games, the uh, the 10 a.m. games that Vinny and I talked about. So Chargers, Titans, just mentioned Atlanta and Green Bay, Indy, Houston, Seattle, Detroit, Chicago, Tampa, KC, Jacksonville, Vegas, and Buffalo, and Baltimore and Cincy. Is there anything that popped for your numbers this week? You guys were talking about the home team, the Raiders. I'm Vinny said, you know, some people are waiting for that seven. I am waiting for that seven. You didn't mention that the Raiders, they don't have Jacoby Myers, who was concussion. Jimmy he is out. Yep. And he was his favorite target last week. I would assume the Bills are smart enough to double team Devontae Adams and kind of leaves them in a tough spot. So if I can get seven, I'll probably jump on there with the Bills. We did kind of talk about the Cincinnati and, um, Ravens game as well earlier this week and I told you I was like that three and a half is very tempting for me with the Ravens I'm glad I waited they have now they have some of their O-line out their center and a left tackle so gonna pass on that one for now Baltimore does have Mark Andrews back um but I again I like I like Cincinnati in that game uh, even though again we talked about this a little bit earlier Vinny uh, uh, you don't overreact too much to week one. That's the main no. reason that I like Cincinnati in this game. And Baltimore, let's face it. I mean, Baltimore playing one of the worst teams in the league, and even though they covered, were not overly impressive a week no, ago. No, they weren't. And again, I think it, 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 with Cincinnati too, I think there's a school of thought that they can't be worse than they were last week. Right? Man, that is and a so, good school of thought. I mean, that, <laughs> that has a lot to do with it. By the way, Joe, I just want to you know, let, let folks know too, Alex White, a third generation mm-hmm. uh, handicapper, uh, if if you will, but the sports betting analyst. Her uh, dad and grandfather, dear friends, and and respected uh, colleagues over the years for uh, Jimmy Vaccaro, Chris Andrews, and I. So Alex uh, does her homework, like we oftentimes talk about when we're putting numbers uh, together. So today, especially refining what what we're going to do with in college for next week, and then uh, as we go through today. Uh, formulating what we're going to hang tonight for next week's NFL games. Alex, you're doing the same exercise uh, from the other side of the counter, which is great and encouraged, actually. Yes, and, you know, we talked yesterday. We had a, quite a big difference among the games. Turned out the bookmakers were absolutely right. They didn't give me enough points in that game. And Every now and then we get the right darts in the spot. Well, that, that Alex, uh, Alex got the better of me in K-State, Missouri. Vinny and company got the better of Alex on Washington and Michigan State. Pretty sure Washington's still scoring points in that game. I yeah. think game so, too. Uh, but, uh, I should have just stopped after that Missouri play. You know, that was the first <laughs> one. That was my first side. Should have just left it there. You, you got there on the under in UTEP and in Arizona pretty comfortably. 
Yes. 31. And you got there in Wyoming. Got Very there. I, I, it got a little more sweaty than I would have liked in the fourth quarter since Texas had the ball going in to make it a 28 point game. And I'm like, not do that. But Wyoming 21 point loss easily there getting the 30. Just a, an update too, uh, as we as we go. And again, these are all live. These are wagers coming in and, and here at the Salt Point. Uh, Jags and Chiefs total continues to come down now, back down to 50. So, so, uh, so uh, there is weather in play in Jacksonville. Yeah, mm -hmm. looks uh, like it. Nice 99 degree, feels like day with wind and rain. Now yeah. in Jacksonville. What's the wind? Because again, the, the wind, wind, as wind, Alex so, can attest, is is a is a bigger factor, right? So, Alex, from the perspective of the total. So the wind. Yeah. I'll tell you this: the mm -hmm. wind is ten miles an hour consistent, but there are gusts in play. Well, that's yeah. up to twenty-five yeah. miles an hour. Mm -hmm. so. you, you're a little too young. I remember tremendous gusts at Shea Stadium when even uh, when uh, Daryl Lamonica and, and Joe Namath were slinging the ball around in Queens. But anyway, that's, we'll, we'll tell those stories. I know what Chase that. Stadium is. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But the wind was. Yes. No, I know. Trust me. The total yeah. wind tunnel, uh, there at old Shea. All right. To the late slate, Vinny giants, Cardinals, Cardinals, lowest power rated team in the NFL giants. Mm. Looked like the lowest power rated team in the NFL a week <sighs> ago, uh, 40 to nothing lost to Dallas on Sunday night. So, Vinny, this is four and a half. Total's 40. Giants are favored in the desert here. Uh, the betters have taken a little piece of the Cardinals, though, through the week. Well, I think when you when you look at the Giants, again, a, a throwaway game. Look, they, they started the game well when, when they had the ball. They, they just, the turnovers killed them, right? They were, I mean, and, and the Cowboys, listen, all full, full marks to the Cowboys. I think it's a terrific defense. They took advantage of the uh, the Giants' mistakes last week. By the way, uh, we just went to four and a half here at the South Point mm -hmm. uh, within the last couple of minutes off of the four. So, again, game opened five, was bet down to four, uh, and we were, we came on the air uh, at uh, at four and now back up to four and a half. So some Giants money coming in. Look, uh, they've got, they've got you, you, you professional teams typically don't look ahead. Uh, they've got a short week coming up, though. They go to... Uh, San Francisco to play uh, or Palo Alto, I guess, uh, to play the uh, uh, the Forty ers this Thursday. So uh, I give the Cardinals a lot of credit. They uh, they battled last week in, in Washington, although uh, I don't think Sam Howell was particularly good for uh, for the Commanders. Uh, but this is a game where we're seeing uh, money starting to show for the Giants, Alex. This is a pass for me. As you mentioned, the Cardinals, I mean, they scared a lot of people who picked them in their survivor pick. It looked like they were going to upset the commanders, but their one touchdown did come from their special teams. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, the Giants, I'm not completely writing them off. They were a 10-win team last year, but I'm not comfortable enough to lay any points with them on the road. Big old pass for me in this game. I want to see that. I want to make sure that the Giants aren't totally broken. That's what I want to make sure today. Because, look, Arizona's not going to go 0-17. At least I don't think they're going to go 0-17. This looks like it could be one of the few games they have a realistic chance to win this year. So I, it's part of the reason that I, I stay, stayed away from that one completely. The Giants' opponent next week is San Francisco. They're in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, the Niners, since the last time they played in SoFi Stadium, Vinny, are 13-1 and overall. So playing... Obviously, ended the season on a great stretch before Brock Purdy and company all got injured in Philadelphia a year ago. So, Vinny, this is down to seven, though. Yeah. Down to seven. Niners laying it in Englewood at SoFi. Totals 45. You know, talked about it earlier in the show. The Rams were one of the better surprises a week ago to the no positive. Uh, but this is, again, this is one of those ones where the Niners have historically had the Rams number over the last few years, except for the most important game these two teams played yeah. in the last few years. Yeah, it's uh, this one's uh, going back and forth, Jeff, between seven and seven and a half. So, I think, you know, they the, did get as high as eight uh, midweek. So this one, this is another one, uh, you know, where betters are, are probably going to lay the seven, but take seven and a, seven mm -hmm. and a half. If it gets back to seven and a half, it won't last very long. Uh, but uh, Niners... Again, a terrific game last week. We talked about the difference. Two good defenses, right, going into that game in Pittsburgh, uh, but certainly many more offensive options, and they were on full display last week for the Niners. Uh, it's a similar situation here, it, but I, I think the big surprise with the Rams, Alex, was their, the way they controlled the line of scrimmage against Seattle last week. So the Rams were better last week than we thought they were going to be, and this is a rivalry game. Absolutely. I had the... Uh... 
Seattle minus five and a half in everything, all my contests, and I bet them. But I think everybody can agree that the Niners were the best team in week mm-hmm. one from top uh, to bottom. Definitely, definitely. So it's a lot of points. I have this on a teaser with my Falcons. So minus two and a half, I'm going to stay right there. This, this uh, just for looking for teaser positions this late, I, again, I prefer taking dogs up as opposed to taking favorites down, but Buffalo and San Francisco seems pretty good. Check your book, see what's better, the money line parlay price or the teaser price. Right. Whatever's better, I would take mm-hmm. that. Um, also, again, I know we're Dallas is one of those as well. We'll get to that game in a mm-hmm. second. Uh, Green Bay up at some books, up to eight and a half. Titans up to eight and a half. Uh, there are some uh, Chicago up to eight and a half as well. There are some pretty generic uh, New England as well on Sunday night. There are a lot of Wong Stanford Wong teaser legs out there this week. A lot of teasers, and uh, typically the way teasers get played, the public will play the favorites and tease numbers down. Um, professional betters, here's how you know that professional betters got involved with teasers. There was a time when teasers. Six, six and a half, and seven point teasers were uh, like even uh, minus a dime, minus twenty. I mean, you look at seven point teasers now in the NFL, and they're up to a dollar fifty, a dollar sixty. So that tells you the success of professional better and the value uh, that was created with teasers. But professionals will take as many points as uh, uh, as possible when they, when they get the opportunity, right, Alex? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Vinny, we uh, talked about this a lot on Friday, this game. Jets at Cowboys. Yeah. Eight and a half now. Cowboys laying it at home against the Jets. We know Zach Wilson starting Aaron Rodgers, uh, claiming he wants to be ready for a potential Jet postseason run with some new surgery. Uh, Let's not get out in front of ourselves on this. Uh, But, Vinny, you know, this is a, a big line and a low total. Something you don't see very often in the NFL. Yeah. With an eight and a half and only a 38 and a half on the total. Yeah, and and the total actually even after the the adjustment. I mean, the, the look ahead. Let's remember this: uh, going into Sunday night's game, uh, Monday night's game. I'm sorry, it was uh, was three and a half and forty five. Yeah. Right. So you have a situation now where the adjustment came. It was ten in some spots. Uh, again, an example where Aaron Rodgers in recent years, and this is this continues the trend. The most imp- impactful player. To the point spread by at least six points, uh, some and in some matchups even even more so. Uh, but here we have uh, this game got as low as eight, so they did lay the eight, and there was teaser money that came in, uh, you know, at minus two and minus one. So uh, this this game is back up to uh, eight and a half right now, thirty eight and a half as you mentioned. The that was bet down from thirty nine, uh, thirty nine and a half too. Um, the other injury here for the Jets, Zerline is out. So they're going with uh, uh, without Austin their, their – Cybert uh, is kicking uh, Austin, they, saw, they signed him this week. So um, this – as good as the, the Bills defense was last week, I think this Cowboy defense is is better, and I think you're going to see uh, Zach Wilson under a great deal of pressure today. I don't, you have, do you have a play on this one, Alex? I do. Mm-hmm. I have a play on the under because, just as you mentioned, mm-hmm. these two defenses are very good, and they proved that last week. Um, and then we talked about it as well. Dallas put up 40, looked good, but two of those did come from Mm -hmm. their defense and special teams. So I watching Monday night's game, I just kept thinking, let Zach Wilson throw the ball, but they, they won't. So they're going to have to rely on their run game with Brees Hall. And I think that slows down the clock going under 38 and a half. Dallas only averaged 4.8 yards of play last week. They didn't have to do anything offensively because the Giants were just handing them points left and right Awful. on Sunday night a week ago. All right, let's go to Denver next. Uh, this actually is my favorite favorite of the week, Vinny. was yeah. the Broncos. I laid three and a half. It's now four. Uh, we, well, we just went to four. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of people's favorite favorite. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's just one of those for me where Washington last week, if they were playing an NFL team, they lose. <laughs> I, I didn't think Sam Howell was particularly good, was good last week. He was not. Uh, uh, again, battled. Uh, the defense came up with some big plays against uh, the Cardinals, but the Cardinals were winning this, uh, part of that second half, and I thought their special teams uh, were good. Their defense was good. Uh, offense was not particularly uh, uh, good. But uh, this is a game uh, where the Broncos are now. We just went to four a few minutes ago. Thirty-eight and a half. 
on the total, which has been bet down. Not not a real shock, Alex, that the, a Denver game was bet under. Absolutely. No play for me here. I could see why you would take the Broncos. Russell Wilson looked a whole lot better than he did last year. In one of his drives, he had like seven different targets. So I like what they're doing offensively, but stay away from me. Still a long ways to go for Sean Payton and company. Of course, yeah. losing as a, as a favorite outright and a very bad result for you last week, Vinny, with the Raiders winning and getting bet a thousand different ways by everyone behind us. It's all right. Uh, but, uh, we'll be all right. I, I, I know you. But regardless, I, you know, it's just one of those hold your nose favorites for me, but commanders are. If that's what the Commanders are, what we saw last week, that's going to be a bad football team this year. And Denver, historically, great early in the season at home covering numbers. They didn't last year in week right. two. Thank you, Hackett, against the Texans. And then last week, of course, the Raiders got them outright as an underdog. All right, Sunday Night Football, last one before we get out of here. We will have full previews of Monday Night Football tomorrow in the show. Vinny and I back again, 6 o'clock Eastern time, 3 o'clock local time here in Vegas tomorrow afternoon on Sports by the Book. But Vinny... You know, this one's interesting. Sunday night football, Patriots lose a close game, but don't cover against the uh, the uh, Eagles a week ago. Miami, Tua Tagovailoa, unbelievable in the second half against the Chargers to get the road win. Miami's two and a half here. This is to open two, two and a half, toggled to three, now back to two yeah. and a half here on this one. Well, the three is an absolute take uh, by professional bettors yeah. in this one, right? Uh, again, uh, they laid the two, they laid the two and a half. We were, we're back to two and a half, and... Will we see three? Possibly. Again, a lot's going to depend on what happens today. Uh, this is this is the game that everything goes to. All parlays, all teasers, which started on Thursday night with the Vikings Eagles. So right now at two and a half of uh, the total forty six, which uh, we we got as high as forty seven. So two way action overall uh, off the forty five opener. I love the Dolphins here. This is my okay. favorite favorite, my favorite favorite actually. Mac Jones, he looked good. He had over three hundred passing yards last week and. When you compare, like, they have very similar stats. Their defense, they both had three sacks in their respectable games. But I think the biggest difference maker, as you mentioned, Tua looked great. And the Dolphins have Tyreek Hill. He is just a different animal. I think the Dolphins want this game to prove that they are a legit playoff contender. Miami has not lost to New England with Tua Tagovailoa at quarterback. Bordeaux, which right. is pretty amazing, all things considered. All things considered. With how Belichick right. has had his way with young quarterbacks, but Tua has never lost. Typically, they go England. up there later in the year, too. It's well, usually I remember two the years other ago. I remember around, two right? years ago, right. I had New England every which way. Damian Harris fumbles when he's we're going in to win the game, and mm. Miami won that game. Hey, you remember your losses more than your wins, right, Vinny? Oh, well, yeah. They're <laughs> on both sides of the counter. On both sides me. of the counter. That's all the time we have here today. Go out there. You still got a few minutes behind us. If you're if you're on property here, make your bets. You still have some time. Kiosk over there in the corner, or use the mobile app. Mobile app. Still have plenty of time. Got it. Five minutes to get all your bets in on the mobile app. We're we're excited. And don't we forget do. team totals. Yes. Individual team totals becoming more and more popular. By the way, individual team totals for the game. Team totals. First team to score a touchdown in the early window. Highest scoring team of the of the day available. Plenty of props. And again, remember, if you bet the first team to score of the day a touchdown, time of game, not time of day. Just remember that as we go along. For Alex White, for Vinny Maliulo, shout out to Ann and Jerry doing a great job making sure we're on the air today. I'm Jeff Parles. It's live as always from the South Point studio. This has been Sports by the Book. We'll see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock Pacific time here where you're watching.